name's Caitlin Yarsky. I'm the artist on Coyotes by Image Comics. So I feel like I always kind of had this inclination to draw and it's never been a question really for me. There's little times in your life growing up where you think maybe I'll do something else, but it kind of seemed to be a pretty clear path for me. I was always drawing. It was kind of therapeutic, I think, in the beginning and you kind of get lost in it. And it's harder to maintain that feeling, I think, when you get older, but it's, I'm trying to get back there. You know, I wasn't really a huge comics person growing up. I think most of it was, in the beginning it was, I read school assigned things like, like Mouse was one of the first comics I ever read, which is a pretty great one to start with, I think. I think the comic that really got me into the world was The Sandman, which is kind of a typical response, I guess, but it's such a great series and really, uh, really opened up the world to me because I thought I guess I thought it was more of a, you know, that the superhero world was more what comics was about, and then I realized that there was a whole other, you know, aspect. I've been drawing since I can remember, honestly. I, I don't remember not drawing, so it's just always been part of my life. So I went to RIT um, up in Rochester, New York, got a, a BFA in illustration, and then I got work up there doing uh, game design for, um, like, mobile games, you know, Nickelodeon, kind of stuff like that. So I learned a lot on that job, and was really invaluable experience. My time with game design was really valuable and uh, everything I learned about design and the technology I had to learn, you know, all the software and animation and typography and things like that. And I think I kind of took that skill set to into comics, you know, really helped me. The transition was interesting. I just realized that I wasn't really a gamer and it wasn't really my world. It took me a while to figure it out, but I realized like comics was where I wanted to be because I love telling stories. Uh, when I was in middle school, I had a friend named Laura who had this, she, she got one of those like plastic chicken nugget toys from McDonald's and it had like a face and it was really creepy. And um, she called it Psyche. And then I decided to write this story called like Laura and her chicken nugget. And it was, me and her were sisters, we were sisters and she was secretly a mad scientist. And she was planning to clone herself and her chicken nugget Psyche and take over the world. So, um, and I was the only one who knew about it. And uh, she acted normal in front of her parents and everything. So that was the beginning. That was the first comic I ever did. First professional comic or the first published one is the uh, Coyotes by Image Comics. I've done a few other projects, but they weren't published by anybody. They were just kind of like work for hires. Yeah, I mean, I can't like listen to the music that I like listening to when I'm drawing because it kind of takes me out of it. You know, it's uh, usually like sad singer songwriter type stuff and the words kind of, you know, I, I get distracted, but it definitely influences, inspires the art. So I think the process for me is, you know, getting inspired by music, getting inspired by other artists, you know, looking for visual inspiration online through movies, you know, through animated films and, and comic books, obviously, and just trying to figure out what my voice is, you know, I feel like I'm still developing that. I have a lot of favorite visual artists, I've, I'm still pretty new to the comic world, but I've been growing a list of people that I've been following and, and really admiring. So I love Joshua Middleton, I love Jill Thompson, I love Greg Ticini and Matteo Scalera and Pepe Larraz, and they're just like amazing artists to I me, mean, I follow them online and everything. And then, you know, there's a lot of illustrators that I love outside of comics. You know, I love like Carla Ortiz is amazing. She's a concept artist and a fine artist. And she just did, I think, concept artist for Black Panther recently. So yeah, and, and of course there's like older illustrators and fine artists that I really love. You know, Norman Rockwell and J.C. Leyendecker and pre raphaelite paintings and things like that. So my process has been changing and it's been morphing a lot um, since I started Coyotes, which is kind of risky because you don't want your style to change too much. But I've just been really wanting to experiment and try to figure out what feels most comfortable. So for the first four issues, everything was digital and I was uh, drawing and painting, quote unquote, painting in um, Clip Studio Paint Pro and using a Wacom uh, Mobile Studio Pro, which is a, a great machine to draw right on the screen. So that's a great set of tools, but I started kind of getting screen fatigue, I think, and feeling like, you know, I wanted to have something tangible. So I've been, for the last, uh, for this, this last four issues, I've been working traditionally and, you know, experimenting with different materials. I've been using Bristol paper and all the, you know, Copic pens and, and microns and brushes and like speedball ink and just trying a lot of different things. It's funny, they both have their ups and downs. I thought I would do traditional again and immediately think, oh, this is this is so much better. Part of me has more fun doing it because it, it feels more satisfying to have like a final product. 
but I do miss the fluidity and the, the editability, I guess, if that's a word, um, of the digital stuff. You know, I, I, I sometimes my, my fingers have like that, that like control Z reflex, you know, when I'm like trying to draw something and I do something wrong and I, and I, on, with a with a brush pen or something and I go, oh, man, I wish I had the ability to just undo what I just did. I, like I've actually been kind of combining the two processes recently, like I've been doing, you know, quote unquote pencils digitally just so I can like move things around and shrink and expand them. It just makes it easier to edit things and then print that out as like almost like blues, you know, and, and then ink over that with traditional ink. Coyotes is a kind of like a horror thriller. I think of it a little bit like kind of like magical realism, which is more of a literary genre, but it's about a girl named Red whose family is killed by these werewolves uh, or were coyotes. And um, she joins this girl gang to seek vengeance. It starts off like a straight up revenge story, but it kind of morphs into something else and involves a lot more mythology and kind of like nuanced social commentary about toxic masculinity and the patriarchy and, um, and all that stuff. So Abuela is the sort of the grandma of the Riding, Riding Hood story, Red Riding Hood story. Um, and there's a bunch of grandma like characters that kind of fight. They're like supernatural characters. Abuela is like the, the main one and uh, she's really sassy and fun and mean <laughs> and and really gross, uncouth, I guess. Uh, but she's a really awesome character. For, for people looking to get into the comic industry, I think that really working on getting your character, like anatomy, perspective, like composition, like really getting those to a level that you feel can compete in the world of comics, you know, before you even start looking around for people to work with or things like that. Because I think that's really like the underlying thing that you need before anything else can happen. It doesn't even matter what style you're working in. You can, you, cause you can tell, like, you know, Scotty Young is a really cartoony style, but you, he understands how people move and gestures and expressions and, and compositions. Yeah.